wishing well. Happiness, some lines came back to him. What are we, beings of a day, shadows of a dream? But when the light, God given, the light, when that comes, brightness is on us, brightness, and life is lovely. And so it was, light coming, alighting, playing over all, but over the two of them in particular, like tongs, well-being, in which he was aware of the passing away of trouble and tension, so that although light had indeed come over him, it was also like passing out of a sunlight that had been too brilliant into a grateful shade, and suddenly feeling, under a dappling coverlet of leaves, a release and a relief, so that the features knew, with a shock, how tense and strained they had been, and for too long lightness of spirit. He looked about him. Rose in summer is a busy place, busy and ordinary, and everything he looked at pleased him, especially the little harbour, which had not made any effort to keep up with the world. He liked that, and that they were strangers here, and he could sit with her at a table in the public view, and take her hand when he pleased, and they could stroll along. She watched his enjoyment. He was quite transparent, she saw quite clearly what it felt like in him as his feelings climbed and held and he looked about him, pleased. He saw her watching. He knew that her own enjoyment at that moment consisted mostly in being amused by the sight of him. But he was not downcast and felt he could carry her away with him on his feelings just as soon as he wished. There's a lot you don't know about me, she said. He was grateful for this topic into which he could direct his happiness. He answered that he was glad. They were at the beginning. It was an outset. He loved outsets. He would learn and learn, and the more there still was to know about her, the better. When I fell in love with you, she said, it grieved me that there were so many years of your life before my time that I could never belong to, and I could only learn about if I asked you and you told me. Telling is good, he said, for both of us. When I tell you things you didn't know, I feel I hardly knew them myself before I told you. It's as though they're only becoming clear to me now, in the light of you. And then, because of course this was at the heart of his happiness, this was lighting up the ordinary seaside town, lightening his spirits, relaxing the strain that for so long had tensed his features. Then he couldn't hold back, and he said, and after tonight, after we've slept together, it won't grieve you any more. Once we know each other like that, the rest won't trouble you. You'll see it the way I see it now. Life for the asking, more and more, nowhere refused. She looked at him wonderingly, such innocence. He seemed to walk on faith without fear of disappointment. The very spectacle of him made her fearful. How was any mortal supposed to live up to a part in that? Then she thought him not innocent, but, for all his intelligence, obtuse, and beginning to say, I hope you won't be disappointed, she felt almost a wish that he should be, that he should grow up, and she halted the sentence, shaking her head. And perhaps he was right. Certainly she had no more worries about the place. The place they had decided on was certainly right. She was on firm ground, where she had feared she might sink in. That was one good stepping stone. She would believe him, the other stones would be there, step by step. She stood up. I'll go and pay, she said. When she came out again, she saw a hesitancy in his manner, as though in the brief absence her lingering anxiety had touched him. She took him by the hand. The well, she said. I have to show you the well. I have to begin showing you and telling you. Today's the day, and tonight is the night. Coming back is risky. He was glad to be a stranger there, with no memories. Soon she let go of his hand and walked apart, wholly given up to an anxious looking. This wasn't here then, she muttered. The sea came right in. To him the wall, the railing, the further defences were unexceptionable. But she said crossly, as though he were to blame, it was ashore, the sea came right up. There were floods, he said. You told me about them. They had to build a wall. Yes, yes, she said. They had to. Don't they always have to? They had walked too far. She was wringing her hands, almost in tears. Don't say it's gone. Nobody would do a thing like that. Chapel and well. Nobody would raise a chapel and fill in a well. She turned and walked back, hurrying away from him. It's here, he said. 
He had to shout after her. She had hurried on. How lovely. He was leaning over the railing, looking down. A tiny humped chapel, squat and solid, crouched under the wall, out of sight of the road, like a shell, like something that would have housed a naked hermit crab. Between it and high tide ran a bulwark of quarry stones. But it was on the beach, she said, just above high water, not protected at all. Why does everything have to be protected? Once or twice the sea came in, I know that, and my father told me he had read of other occasions, seaweed on the flagstones, salt water on the fresh under the altar. But they cleaned it out, the sea went away again, the fresh water well renewed itself. Stink of salt and weed in that thick shell for months, like being in a sea cave. But it freshened again, the sun came in, a breeze, people brought wild flowers, why put a wall around it? He shrugged. Things are getting worse, he said. You know that. The floods further up the coast were terrible. Slowly she was reconciled. She took his hand again. Come and see, she said. Come down. I'm so happy that we are here together and I can show you the well. Temenos, a little precinct, which he liked. She clung to her picture of a sacred house on the beach, just above high water, but conceded that the enclosure was decent. Inside, the memory took her by the throat, seized her around the heart with a hand of ice. The hairs on her neck stood up in holy dread. One window by the altar, another in the north wall, broadside onto the sea, a saint in each, an utter simplicity. It was a cave, a shell, the carapace of a spirit, furnished humanly with a table and a few chairs, not asking to be thought beautiful. The thick walls, rough as the hands that had fitted them, enclosed a presence of... of what, exactly? Human impress, people at their most serious, their most given up and most wishful. She went on her knees and pulled him down by her, not at the altar, which she disregarded, but at the well beneath the stone roof that the altar made. A square of clear water, as though a flagstone had been removed, and there was the water, quietly arrived and waiting. She dipped in her hands, raised them up to his mouth. Drink, she said, drink and wish hard. He did as she asked, all the water. He lapped at her wet palms, drank and loved her and wished hard, looking into her eyes over the bowl of her hands. He had never seen her so sure and demanding. Now me, she said, offer me. So he did, raised up some water in his cupped hands to her mouth. She drank, wished hard, looked him hard in the eyes. 